friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another WW Weekly Meal Prep. I cannot wait to share with you the four, yes four, recipes that I prepared for my breakfast, my lunches, and a amazing Instant Pot dessert with you for this week. If you're interested in seeing what I have on the menu for the week, step-by-step -step instructions on how to prepare my meals, and of course, all of the recipes are always, always linked down in the description box below, then all you have to do is keep watching. For breakfast this week, I'm gonna be making blueberry buttermilk pancake casserole. I cannot wait to have this. I've really been craving pancakes lately, and I thought that this would be really good to pair with some sort of protein. Remember, we talked about upping our protein this week, so I'm gonna be pairing this with some protein, and that is going to be my breakfast. So let me show you what is in our blueberry buttermilk pancake casserole. So first, you're going to need some milk or milk alternative of your choice. You are gonna need some buttermilk, some sugar-free syrup, some flour, light butter, eggs, blueberries. I'm gonna use these wild blueberries. Mine are frozen. You can do fresh or frozen. You're also going to need some cinnamon, some vanilla extract, a lemon, baking soda, baking powder, salt, brown sugar alternative. I'm gonna go ahead and use Sucrin Gold. This is linked down in my Amazon store below. And for my sweetener, I'm gonna use monk fruit. And again, this is linked in my Amazon store. And then of course, if I didn't say already, cause I can't remember, you're going to need some flour. So let's get started on breakfast meal prep. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make our crumb topping for our pancake casserole because it does need to go into the refrigerator while we make the rest of our casserole. So the first thing that I'm going to be adding is one half of a cup of flour. Now you can use self-rising flour in the actual recipe, just make sure you eliminate your leveling agents, but I am using regular flour. I am also going to be adding in two teaspoons of my monk fruit sweetener. And again, you can use any sugar alternative. I also have melted down four tablespoons of light butter. So we're gonna add that. And then we are going to add three tablespoons of our brown sugar alternative. And again, I am using Sucrin Gold. And we are also going to be adding in a little bit of ground cinnamon. And I don't measure my spices, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And then lastly, we are gonna go ahead and add in just a little bit of salt to enhance the flavor. And again, I'm not going to measure, just kind of eyeball that as well. And then go ahead and take a fork. You wanna make sure you get this nice and mixed together. This is a crumb bowl, so you do want it to be crummy. So we're gonna make sure that we have kind of big chunks once we mix everything together. And then this is just going to go into our refrigerator while we create the rest of our pancake casserole. But this smells sweet, cinnamony, and delicious. Next, we're gonna mix together the dry ingredients for our actual pancake. So you're going to need two and a half cups of flour. And then you're also going to need one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda, which I went ahead and put both into my little bowl. You're also going to need two tablespoons of your sugar alternative. So again, I'm using the monk fruit sweetener. And then lastly, you're just going to need to add just a little bit of salt to enhance the flavoring. And then we're gonna give this a quick stir together. Make sure everything's nice and combined before we move to add in our wet ingredients. Next, we're gonna go ahead and combine all of our wet ingredients and we'll add it to our dry ingredients. So here I have two cups of low fat buttermilk and that's what's gonna give it that nice, delicious buttermilk pancake flavor. We are also going to add in just a little bit of vanilla extract, and I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to wing it. And then I have cracked two eggs, so we're gonna go ahead and add in two eggs. And then we are going to do one half of a cup of almond milk, or whatever milk you wanna use in your recipe. And then I've also melted down an additional four tablespoons of light butter. And your butter may clump when added to the wet 
or the cold wet ingredients that is perfectly fine you do not want to over mix so the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and zest in some fresh lemon into our mix give it a quick stir and then we'll be ready to add it to our dry ingredients and mix everything nice and together next we're going to mix everything together so we have our dry ingredients we have our wet ingredients go ahead and add that all together to your large bowl again we do not want to over mix so i'm just going to mix until this is incorporated it will be lumpy just like regular pancake batter is lumpy as well and then we're going to put this into our greased baking dish and pop this into the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes and then it should be nice and done so the last step once we get it into our baking dish before going into the oven is to go ahead and add in our blueberries and our crumbed topping so make sure you grab a 9 by 13 baking dish. You grease it very well. We're going to go ahead and add in our pancake batter to our 9 by 13 dish. Make sure you spread that out nice and evenly and get that nice and coated along the whole bottom of our baking dish. And then we'll be ready to add on our blueberries and add on our crumb topping. But you guys, this looks so good. So this is going to be similar to a pancake bake, but it's going to be a little bit more real pancakey because we did make it with the same ingredients as we would if we were gonna grill up some pancakes on our griddle. So get your batter spread nice and even on the bottom of your baking dish. Then it's time to take whatever fruit or whatever blueberries you're using. And the recipe calls for about one and two thirds cup, but I'm just going to sprinkle some blueberries over the top of my casserole because blueberries are zero points. And in my opinion, the more blueberries on this pancake casserole, the better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and liberally add blueberries to the top. And then after that gets done, we're ready to add our crumb coating and get this guy into the oven. Once you've got your blueberries added, next up is we are just gonna go ahead and add our crumb topping. So we're just gonna kind of drop it on to our casserole. Make sure that you get a little bit in each area of your casserole just so when it cooks you've got a little bit of that delicious sugary brown sugary cinnamony crumb topping on every single bite. And then we'll be ready to put this into the oven for about 45 minutes. So here is our completed casserole before it goes into the oven. Doesn't that look so delicious? So I'm gonna get this in the oven and I will be back to show you the final blueberry pancake casserole. Look at our breakfast. Look at how delicious this looks with the crumble and those blueberries and the pancake popping up. Okay, this looks delicious. So I'm going to let this cool for just a few minutes. We'll cut it into our serving sizes, get it into our meal prep container. What I'm gonna do, because this is the points that I like to use for breakfast, I'm just gonna go ahead and pair it here with a couple of hard boiled eggs. I did cook these down in my Instant Pot, so they're just currently in an ice bath, but I'm just gonna pair that with some eggs. So let's let this cool and I'll show you what our completed breakfast for the week are gonna look like. So here are my breakfast for the week. So excited, you guys. So here is one serving of the blueberry pancake buttermilk bake. Look at that. That looks so good with those blueberries. Look at how thick, delicious, full of blueberries, full of cinnamon sugar goodness. I'm also going to pair that with two hard boiled eggs. So one tenth of the blueberry casserole is only six smart points. So that's not bad because as you can see, it pretty much fills the entire large compartment of my meal prep container and it is only six points, but look at that, yum. And then I'm going to pair that with a banana for zero. Eggs are zero. So my entire breakfast is only six smart points. That's it for this protein packed, fruit included, delicious breakfast. I also just wanted to let you guys know that I am going to take some of my sugar-free syrup in a little container to work and I'm just going to put this on my pancake casserole. Not enough to count as any points, maybe just a tablespoon or two, but I forgot to show you that. So there you have it. For the main part of my lunch today, I'm kind of inventing my own recipe. I'm going to be doing some sheet pan roasted potatoes, 
chicken apple sausage with some veggies and then we're gonna make a side dish to go with it so let me show you first what is in the main portion of my lunch which is the sheet pan chicken apple sausage and peppers so we're going to need some potatoes I'm gonna be using these little potato company these are super easy I just dice them in half and they make perfectly roasted potatoes I'm going to be using the Sam's Choice Chicken Apple Sausage. Again, these are from Walmart. These are so, so good. They are only two smart points for a link. And this is a full-size sausage link. Love these sausages. We're going to be adding some salt and, of course, some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to be dosing in a little bit of garlic, some ground black pepper, and then I'm going to season everything with this Dax Green Zest. You guys, Dax is so good. All of their seasonings contain zero salt. They all have real ingredients, nothing artificial. So spices, dehydrated onion, garlic, lemon peel, less than 2% of an anti-caking agent. That's it. And these spices have so much flavor for having zero salt. If you're interested in Dax, I do have a 10% off plus free shipping discount code down in the description box. But I love the green zest on peppers and potatoes. So that's what I'm going to add for today. I also have a sweet onion and what's left of a red onion. And then we are going to load up on some peppers. So we have all the colors, orange, red, yellow, and green. So let's get started on the main part of our lunch, our sausage, potatoes, and peppers. So the first thing we're going to do is get chopping. We have a lot of chopping to do. All our peppers, our onions, our sausage, and then we're simply just going to dice our potatoes right in half. So let's get everything prepared. I did get my sheet pan out layered it with some parchment paper with some nonstick cooking spray so i'm literally going to chop and toss onto my cookie sheet save another dish so let's get chopping your veggies all cut potatoes and sausage you can see here that I ended up putting them on two separate sheet pans only because there was so much I'm actually prepping for five days so layered them out just so that they were a little more evenly layered you don't really want them over on top of each other they won't crisp up as well that way so I am going to now add just a little bit of cooking spray over the top of the veggies and potatoes and meat just to help with that browning process. And remember, we did spray our sheet pan as well with the nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some of my minced garlic. I purchased this at Costco. So I'm just going to place some garlic in my palm and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top of my veggies and then the same thing over the top of my potatoes and my sausage. This should get nice and crispy and caramelized in the cooking process and should be delicious. I'm also going to sprinkle just a little bit of pink Himalayan sea salt over the top. That will just bring out the flavor a little bit more. And then my main flavoring, of course, is going to be the Dax green zest. So I'm going to add also just a little bit of black pepper over the top of everything. Actually, let's use this end. Pepper is another one I like to just put in my palm because I am notorious for overdoing the pepper um, and just putting on way, way, way too much. So if you're like me and you don't have the grinder kind, which is actually what I purchased uh, once this is gone, uh, this is a really good way to do it. Just add it a little bit to your palm. And then last but not least, the star of the show is our Dax Green Zest Seasoning. And again, I'm going to liberally, because this is so delicious, put this over the top of all of my veggies and also over the top of all of my potatoes and my sausage. And then we are going to put this into the oven at 450 degrees until it is cooked through. Midway, I am gonna take a spatula and flip everything over. So I'm gonna get this put into the oven. The other part of my lunch this week is going to be berry cheesecake salad. I'm going to pair this with my delicious chicken potatoes and peppers. So let me show you what is in our berry cheesecake 
salad. So first you're going to need some milk or milk alternative. Some sort of whipped topping, you can do regular. Just calculate your points accordingly. Light, sugar-free, I'm going to do light. You're gonna need lots of delicious fresh fruit. So I have strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, a lemon for some lemon zest, and then you'll need a box of sugar-free Jell-O cheesecake pudding. Make sure you are using fresh fruit, not frozen. So let's get started on our dessert. So the first thing for our berry cheesecake salad is I went ahead and I diced my strawberries into really small pieces. We are going to add in the rest of our fruit. So we have our blueberries and it's about one cup of each of these and about two cups of strawberries. And then we're gonna add in our fresh raspberries. And then we are going to take a lemon and we're just going to zest a lemon just directly over the top of our fruit. You can go ahead and add a little lemon juice if you'd like. It does not call for it in the recipe. I might do that. I wanna wait to give it a quick taste and see exactly how much of the actual lemon zest that I can taste. And I do really like the combination of berries and lemon, so I may go ahead and add that little bit of lemon juice. So get your lemon zested, and then we are going to mix together our pudding and milk, and then we'll fold in everything in with our berries. Next, we're going to take our two cups of almond milk and our package of sugar-free cheesecake pudding. We're just gonna add the pudding directly to the almond milk container. Take your whisk, whisk this together until it has started to thicken, and then we are going to add this and our whipped topping directly to our berries. So just keep whisking until you feel that your consistency of your milk and pudding mixture has gotten thicker. Once your pudding mixture has thickened, go ahead and add it to a bowl. And then to the pudding mixture, we are gonna go ahead and add in our tub of light whipped topping. We're gonna fold that together before we fold it into our berries. We need to be careful with our berries not to smush them in the process of folding in the rest of our ingredients. So we are gonna mix together our whipped topping and our pudding mixture until it is nice and combined. And then we are gonna go ahead and add that directly into our berries. Once you get your whipped cream and pudding mix nice and combined, I did go ahead and squeeze in about half of a lemon. We are going to take our berries with our lemon zest and we're gonna go ahead and add in our whipped cream and pudding mixture directly to our berries. And then we are going to gently, very, very gently, with a spatula, stir to combine your berries in with your whipped cream and pudding mix. Again, we wanna be really careful, especially with our raspberries, not to squish them in the mixing process. Then once this is nice and combined, we'll cover it with some saran wrap, and we'll pop it into the fridge, give it a chance to cool just a little bit more, thicken up a little, and then we will get this into our containers for our lunches this week. But doesn't this look so delicious? It is a very low point dessert, and it allows you to also get in your second little bit of fruit for the day. So this, of course, will be my second fruit for the day. So I'm gonna get this in the refrigerator, and we'll be back once the, everything comes out of the oven to put together lunch. Just pulled the sausage and potatoes and veggies out. Look at how delicious this looks. That brown crystallized on the sausage and the potatoes. And look at our peppers and our onions. Yum, yum. So I'm gonna let these cool for just a couple of minutes and then we will combine them into our meal prep containers. Now, I cut each sausage link into 10 pieces. So I'm going to make sure that I have a total of 10 pieces of sausage per container and that will give me exactly two smart points. So let's get our meal prep assembled for lunch. So you can see here that I've added 10 pieces of the sausage. I am going to do uh, the equivalent of five to six potatoes, which is anywhere from 10 to 12 halves. That is the serving size. That is what I've calculated as far as points. And then I'm just going to liberally dose some vegetables into my large compartment of my meal prep container. So let's get these lunches put together and I'll show you our completed meal prep. So here is our finished lunch prep. You can see that I just left this side open because I don't wanna put my dessert in there because I don't wanna warm up my dessert. So let me show you exactly what I'll be having for lunch. So first, you can see that I have a serving of my potatoes, sausage, peppers, and onions 
I tried an onion. You guys, this is so incredibly delicious. That Dax makes all the difference. This is a huge serving of food. So I have, that is my main portion of my lunch. And then into a container, I went ahead and added one sixth of my berry cheesecake salad to a container. One sixth of the recipe is only three points. And that is your fruit and a dessert all rolled into one. So that is three points. And then it is two points for my sausage and three points for a serving of potatoes. So my sausage potato mix is five points. My fruit and dessert is three. So this is a total of eight smart points for this entire lunch. For dessert for the week, I'm going to be making WW Instant Pot Apple Cake. So let me show you everything that you will need for this dessert. Of course, you need your Instant Pot. Mine is linked down in my Amazon store along with quite a few other options if you're looking to purchase an Instant Pot. I do have two Instant Pot recipe series on my channel. Make sure you guys check those out. You're also going to need some sugar substitute, some sort of milk alternative. I'm gonna use this almond cashew milk, some oatmeal, either self-rising flour or regular flour with baking powder or soda, You'll need some unsweetened applesauce, some salt, some cinnamon, vanilla extract, and last but not least, some apples. So let's get started on our dessert. So to get started on our apple cake, I did put in one cup of water into my Instant Pot. I'm also going to add in my trivet because you do wanna keep everything off of the base of the pot. I'm going to be using this adorable spring foam pan that came in my accessory kit for my Instant Pot. It is all linked down in my description box below in my Amazon store. This accessory kit came with several, several Instant Pot things for a phenomenal price. So this is the pan that we're gonna use. So let's get our recipe put together. So to make our apple cake, we are going to add one cup of flour. Again, I am using self-rising flour, so I won't be adding any baking soda or baking powder. We are also going to add one quarter cup of almond milk and one quarter cup of unsweetened applesauce. I went ahead and diced up two of those really small apples. I have the original recipe to make a smaller cake, so this is two of those super small apples chopped up. So we're gonna add those. We're also going to add one quarter cup of our Truvia. Now you can use any sugar alternative, but I am using Truvia. And then we are also going to add in just a dash of salt. Salt always enhances the sweet flavor by giving it a nice balance. We're also going to be adding in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we are going to add in some cinnamon. I do not measure my cinnamon. I'm just going to wing it. And I like a lot of cinnamon. And then lastly, I have one half of a cup of my oats. And then I am just going to give this a stir until everything is combined. And then we will get it put into our adorable Instant Pot spring foam pan. And we will get it into our Instant Pot. All right, so we're ready to put our cake into our Instant Pot. So I'm just going to set it directly here onto the trivet. We are going to pop the lid on our Instant Pot and we are actually going to be using, which is super cool, is Instant Pot actually has, if it'll focus, there we go, a cake setting. So we're gonna hit the cake and we're gonna knock down the time for this particular recipe to 25 minutes, but that was for twice the batter. So I'm actually going to put this down to 15 minutes and then we are good to go. So in 15 minutes, I'll be back to show you what our cake looks like. Again, if that's not enough time, I can always add some additional time. Once 15 minutes has passed, your Instant Pot will flash the screen that says L000. That is natural release time. Our recipe asks us to release for five minutes. So I'm gonna let this count up to five, then we'll take our lid off and see how our apple cake turned out. Once you've natural release for five minutes, we're gonna go up here to our dial and we're gonna turn it to vent and we are going to allow it to vent the last little bit of steam and then we are able to open up and take a look-see at our apple cake. There's our apple cake. Look at that, you guys. That looks so delicious. I'm going to go ahead and pop it out of my Instant Pot 
We'll let it cool for a few minutes. We'll slice into it and I'll show you the completed cake. I did also get these little rubber mitts from my little accessory pack off of Amazon and I can use those to just reach in and pull right out my Instant Pot cake. And there's our apple cake. I used the springform pan so it was very easy to pop the ring off and now it's just sitting on the tray. We're gonna let this completely cool. I'll slice it up and I'll show you a serving size, but you guys, this looks moist, delicious, and this is a good sized apple cake. Our apple cake has been cut into four servings. So a serving is one fourth, which is quite a large piece of cake. Wait till you see this. Look at this, you guys. Look at those layers of cake and apples and cinnamon goodness. I went ahead and topped this with a little bit of fat-free ready whip and some cinnamon, but this is a large slice of cake. And this, you guys, four smart points. Four smart points for a piece of delicious Instant Pot WW friendly apple cake. Here's what I'm gonna be taking for snacks this week. So, of course, I'm gonna be taking a Bilt Bar each day. That is my mid-morning snack that I eat between breakfast and lunch. Again, it keeps me full, it keeps me satisfied. It cures that little bit of sweet craving that I have in the mid-morning. Bilt Bars are so good. And look at this, you guys. The brand new cinnamon chocolate cream. I love, love, love this flavor so much. If you like chocolate covered cinnamon bears or cinnamon bears in general, you are going to love this flavor. That is exactly what it tastes like. The cinnamon flavor is perfect. It's not overpowering. It is so delicious. So make sure you hop on to builtbar.com. You do have to order a full box in order to qualify to order a six pack of the cinnamon bars. You cannot just order these on their own, so keep that in mind. But you can use my discount code here on the screen to save you 10% and get free shipping. Love me some built bars. So I'm gonna take a variety of flavors. I have raspberry, mint, double chocolate, coconut, and of course, cinnamon. Three smart points for a delicious protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. If you haven't ordered already or you're interested in the cinnamon, builtbar.com is the place to go. I'm also going to take some Smart Pop. I may be at jury duty, so I'm gonna be able to pop this in the microwave in the waiting room. And I think this would be a good snack that will keep me full as well. So these little bags are only three smart points. I'm also for some protein extra going to take a two good, two grams of sugar, three grams of carbs. I really like this yogurt. I like it better than the regular Dan and Light and Fit. I'm going to top that for a little extra boost of nutrients with some of this vanilla cluster Julian Bakery Pro Granola. I love this flavor. It is so good. Here are your stats on your granola. It is only two smart points for a half of a cup of granola. Paleo and keto. Low carb, high protein, gluten free, grain free, nothing artificial, soy free, non GMO. And this particular flavor, you guys, is vegan. So if you are interested in a vegan or plant based granola, this is so good. Two smart points for a half of a cup. I am just going to put about a tablespoon though here on top of my yogurt. So it will be zero points. If you're interested in Julian Bakery, they have about a half a dozen flavors. They are all delicious. You can go to julianbakery.com, use my code here on the screen and earn yourself 10% off and free shipping. I highly recommend this. It is delicious by itself as a cereal or added to granola or non-fat Greek yogurt, or you can top muffins with this. I mean, it is seriously a total game changer. Definitely recommend Pro Granola. So that is going to be what I'm taking for snacks for the upcoming work week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the recipes that I shared with you. Everything is so incredibly good. That breakfast, the sausage and onion and potatoes is amazing. The apple cake and of course the berry cheesecake salad. Berries, cheesecake, definitely a win. So make sure you check out the description box below for all of the recipes as well as all of the discount codes that I have available for you, including the ones I showed you today, Built Bar, Julian Bakery. Also, my Instagram, my Facebook, and my Happy Mail PO Box are all also down in the description box. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to welcome you. Make sure that you subscribe hit that little notification bell. That way you'll be notified each and every single time that I upload a new video. Give this video a thumbs up. 
comment right down below. Let me know what you're going to make off of this week's meal prep. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.